So your voice will come out on this, but like if you're answering me and stuff, but you're you're not on camera. Shit. Okay, so unit circle. The the unit circle, of course, is just a circle of radius one, right? That we draw, and then. From that circle, if you go to any point on that circle, the distance from here to here would always be one, right? This angle that we form, we call that theta. And if you imagine like a right triangle almost, this distance from here to here is always going to be called x, and then of course this is y, right? But we have the trig functions, right? Sine, cosine, tangent, all that. What we know is that this point, this point right here, will always be cosine of that angle theta, and the y-coordinate will always be sine of theta. Now, I can show you why that's true quickly by just drawing that right triangle. Call that x, call that y, call that theta, and then go back to that whole Sokotoa thing. And we'll just look at one of these. If we look at this, this means that sine of that angle theta is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, right? So the opposite side of this angle, right, is y, and then the hypotenuse is 1. So y divided by 1 would be y. So we know that sine of theta is y. So that's why this y coordinate is always sine theta. That makes sense to you? Yeah. Okay. And then similarly, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So mm -hmm. you figure out that, that this cosine right here is going to be always going to be your x coordinate. So that's, that's a basic way we can kind of like get the, uh, get the connection between the x and y coordinate mm -hmm. and the angle and those trig functions. So with, with those relationships established, um, we go back and we start looking at the common angles. Right? What are the common angles on the unit circle? Um, and then for each of those common angles, what are the values of the trig functions um, on, on, that, on those angles? So draw another unit circle here. The common angles, let's do, angles can be measured in degrees or radians. So first I'm going to do everything in degrees first, right? So when it comes to degrees, um, we have two groups of angles. The first group of angles is, are formed by starting with a 45 degree angle. So 45 degrees. Um, of course, going out this way is zero degrees. So that's 45. Now we, we double that, right? So two of those would give us 90 degrees. That's straight up, right? And then we add another 45 to that. And so we're doing there's kind, of, there's kind of two ways to look at it, and this, the way I want you to think about it is, you know, we could go 45, add 45 is 90, add 45 is 135, but another way I want you to think about it is we're doing one, two, three 45s, right? Mm -hmm. So three times 45 would be 135. And then we go another 90, it takes us to here, that's four 45s. So if you do four times 45, you get 180, and then five 45s, would take you down to 215, and then 645s would be 270, oops, 270, and then another seventh, right, a seventh 45 would give you 315, right, and then, uh, wait a minute, hold on, I messed one up, this one's 225, I don't know why I did that, sorry, yeah, 45, 180 plus 45 is 225. 315 here, and then 360. So those are your common angles in degrees. The first group we look at are the 45s, okay? Then I'm gonna draw a separate circle over here, and you know what, let me do it on this side. A separate circle over here. And the reason I'm doing a separate circle is just so we don't get too cluttered, okay? The second group of angles 
we start instead of at 45, we start at 30 degrees. And then from that, we keep on, you know, just adding more. So 2 times 30 is 60. And then 3 times 30 is 90. And we just keep doing this all the way around, right? So the next one would be 120. The next one would be 150. 150. The next one would be 180. The next one would be 210. 240. 270. 300. 330. And then back to 360. So if I tried to draw all of those together on one circle, it might get a little too cluttered, right? So those are, your, those are all of your common angles in degrees. You've got the, the group of 45s and you've got the group of 30s, right? Mm -hmm. One thing I, I will point out here is when we're doing the groups of 45s, if you look at from 0 to, to 180 right here, the 45s cut it into four equal groups, right? Four equal groups on top, four equal groups on the bottom. Here with the 30s, you get one, two, three, four, five, six equal groups on top, six on the bottom. Just something to point out, right? Okay, now, this is, this is in degrees. The other measurement we use is radians, right? Radians, and the way radians work is that, I'm gonna draw the same picture here, but in radians. And this is the one most people have trouble with. The 45 degrees, like we had here in radians, or maybe we should do this. Um, I'll let you catch up there, yeah. So if this is zero degrees here, I'm sorry, zero radians here or zero degrees, all the way across the 180 degrees, that's pi radians. That's how many radians there are in a half rotation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut to do, to, this, to do this same picture, we're going to cut this pi into four equal pieces, which means this first piece would be pi over four. That's this first angle. That corresponds to 45 degrees. Now, like I said, the way I like to look at it is, and like here it was just easy to go 45, add 45 and 45, you get 90, right? Mm -hmm. To do this, what I suggest you do is say, all right, this is 145 right here, right? If I do an, I'm sorry, one pi over four. If I go again, I now have this angle is two pi over fours, right? I have two of them. And if I t look at that, two times pi over four, it's pi over two, right? So this angle is really pi over two. And then I've done one of them, two of them. Now this one would be three of them, right? So this is going to be three pi over twos. And then uh, three, no, uh, three, yeah, three pi over four on the one. Three pi over four. So one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four. Then four pi over four, right? But four, the fours will cancel, you get pi. Yeah. Then the next one would be five pi over fours. The next one would be what? Six pi over four. But we can reduce that to be three pi over two. You see how counting around, I think, is a little bit easier than trying to memorize all these things? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. The next one is seven pi over four, and that does not reduce, right? And then the last one would be eight pi over four, which is two pi. Good. Understand? Okay, so 45 degrees is pi over four. 90 degrees is pi over 2, and so on and so forth. Let's do the same thing over here. So I'll do this one in black. So this. So we start at 0, right? And remember, this is pi, right? How many equal pieces do we cut the top into when we do these angles? Six, six right? So if we do six equal angles.
the first one would then be pi over six, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's, it's pi cut into six pieces. That's that angle. Now the next one would be two of those, right? It would be two pi over sixes, but that reduces to be pi over, pi over three. So that's our next angle. And now the third one would be three of those pi over sixes, which reduces pi over two. You see how everything's just like lining up perfectly? The next one would be, see we've gone one, two, three, so four pi over six, which reduces to be two pi over three. And then the next one would be five pi over six, which does not reduce, right? Then we would have six pi over six, which is pi. Seven pi over six, eight pi over six, nine pi over six, 10 pi over six, 11 pi over six, 12 pi over six, right? All the way around. And then we just want to reduce those. So this will be seven pi over six, Eight pi over six reduces to four pi over three. Six, seven, eight, nine pi over six reduces to three pi over two. 10 pi over six is five pi over three. 11 pi over six does not reduce. And then 12 pi over six is two pi. Does that to you seem like a kind of easier way to, to remember these angles? You know, like if somebody were to now give you a unit circle and say, hey, you know, what's that angle right there? Instead of like trying to memorize it, you could realize that, you know, it's not this one. It's this one down here. It's that one. So you, could, you say, okay, these are pi over sixes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pi over six, reduce it five pi over three, right? I mean, that's just, for me, I'm not a big memorizer. So this to me, it, being able to construct it myself, just it sticks better for me. Okay, with all that said, what we now need to do is figure out the value of all of the trig functions at all of these angles. So what we're gonna do to begin this is we're going to just start in the first quadrant. So let's look at the unit circle just in the first quadrant over here. Now we have the angles, the angle that goes right through the middle, that's 45, or if we wanted pi over four. Then we had the other two angles, the one below it, that was 30 degrees or pi over six. Then we had the one that was 60 degrees and that was pi over three. And then we have the angle straight up, which was pi over two or 90 degrees. And of course over here is zero. Okay, well, we're just gonna focus all of our attention on that quadrant alone. And so think about if this is a unit circle, right? The distance from the center to the outside is one. If we go straight from here to here, and I wanna know what the X and Y coordinate are, well, my X would be one. Right? In my Y, I don't go anywhere, so that's zero. Right? And there's another point on this unit circle that we actually know the value of, and that's up here. We know that the X coordinate would have to be zero and the Y coordinate would have to be one because, again, we're, we're not moving left or right, we're just going up one. So you're okay with that? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> the other three points on this unit circle we can actually go through and, and prove why, you know, where their values come from, but just because we want to get to the finish line here, I'm just going to tell you what the value of, the, of those points are, what the X and Y coordinates are, and you just have to kind of memorize them. So we'll start with the, the one that's easiest, which is the one in the middle. This is square root 2 over 2. Are you familiar? That sound familiar? Yeah. Okay. That's the one in the middle. So if you're talking about 45 degrees or pi over four, the X coordinate is root two over two and the Y coordinate is exactly the same. And that kind of makes sense because you move out the same amount that you move up. So these two should match. Now the other two points are very similar to one another, but they're not exactly the same. So this one you just have to remember is root three over two comma one half. 
And the one up here is the same thing, but flipped over, like reverse the order. So then for the other ones, does it just, for the other quadrants, does it just flip? It's just negatives. reflections, like negatives or, yeah, it depends on where you are. So um, the so way, that, yeah, go ahead. So then on uh, the second quadrant, it would just be negative X's, or ne it would be negative for both. Both, or fourth. Negative Y. Negative wise, exactly. So, what I would, the way I remember which, like the order of these, the way that I remember which is which, mm -hmm. is that if you think about, just look at, look at these two fractions, right? You have root three over two versus one over two. Well, they both have the same denominators, don't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so just ignore the denominators for now. Which number is bigger, square root of three or one? That's a bigger number, right? So this should be a bigger number. This is a bigger number than this, right? And when you think about how you get to this point, wouldn't you have to move out further than you go up? Yeah. So your X should be bigger than your Y. Mm -hmm. So that's how I remember that this one goes first and that one second. Okay. And then here it's opposite, right? You just go out a little bit and you go up a lot. Mm -hmm. And once you've got that drawn, then everything else is you know, just like you said, reflections, yeah. right? So let's, uh, let's see if we can't, Leaving, I'll leave this up, but let's try some values here. Um, let's say we wanted to know what's cosine of pi over 3, right? What's cosine of pi over 3? So we go to pi over 3, right? And cosine is always the x. Okay. So, it's one half. so it's 1 half, right? It's 1 half. If we say what's sine, right, of pi over 3, now I want the y coordinate at that same angle, which would be root 3 over 2, right? Um, let's say we wanted to do cosine of 5 pi over 3. So without, without looking too far over here, okay, because I know the temptation is to look there, I'm just going to play through how, the, how I do this in my mind. So I'm visualizing the unit circle. So that's multiplying that by 10. By, okay, so 10, it's, you're saying to get a 6 on the bottom? Wait, yeah. I'm, I'm... I'm saying like you would, it would be 10 angles. Okay, 10 angles. So we'd start at pi over 6, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6. That's it right there. 10 pi over 6. It's the first angle. It's the first so coordinate. Um, it's cosine, so we want the x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate down here, you have to move over, right? Mm -hmm. And then down. Mm -hmm. So if we move over, right, we're, we're right here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the same as this angle, okay. but down here. Okay. Right, sorry, the same as this point, but reflected down. So they should have this, these two numbers should be the same, except, well, let me draw it, it's down here like this. It's that one. Is it, is it the 60 degrees or the 30? We're at 5 pi over 3, right? Mm -hmm. What are you asking? Oh, is it this one or is it this one or, or this one? Yeah. Well, do you agree that this is where we were down here? It was, it was 10 pi over 6, right? So it's here. So look at the symmetry of this problem. If you bring this point and reflect it down like this, right, it hits on top, whereas if you reflect that one, you're talking about here. Okay. So if I bring this one down to here, right? So they need to add up to 90 when you're reflecting. Uh, this doesn't have, is that what you mean, this? Yeah. That doesn't have to be 90. Okay. No, you just think about position. Look at these two points. Look at these two points, right? If I wanted to get to that point, I'd have to go out and then up, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to get to this point, I have to go out the same amount, but then down, okay. right? So then it would just be one half. It would be one half, exactly. That makes sense to you? Mm -hmm. Let's do another one. Let's say we wanted sine of negative pi over six. So I'm going to go like this. 
Positive pi over 6 is right here, right? Mm -hmm. Negative pi over 6 is the other direction, which would put me here. And so these two points are very similar to one another. They have the same x coordinate, just the y's are different, right? So all I have to do is remember that at pi over 6, my y coordinate was a half, but I'm coming down that much. So this would be negative a half. So with that, if it's a negative, can you just look at it on the top and then... Uh, if it's... Uh, for sine, you can, but it's not, not the same for cosine. Because if... What is cosine? What is cosine of negative pi over 6? It would be... Yeah, see, it doesn't change signs. You see that? Yeah, so it's better, I think, to just understand where you are on the circle. Um, let's do another one. How about... How about sine of uh, 3 pi over 2? So this either needs to be a 4 down here, right, or a 6. So it's your choice. So we're going over 9. 9? Okay, nine. so you're going to do, you're doing 6s, pi over 6s? Yeah. So this is the same as 9 pi over, nine pi over 6. Right here, yeah. right? Okay. And yeah. sine is the y coordinate down there? So negative one. Negative one. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's basically it. Now it's just a matter of you like practicing, you know. Mm -hmm. What you could do is on, online you can print out a unit circle mm -hmm. and it will have everything, right? Mm -hmm. But then you can like, um, I think you can print out a, a unit circle without the numbers yeah. or like leave them blank. And then you go try and fill them in, okay. you know, and that's a good exercise because then you're, you know, you're basically taking the value of all those trig functions at all these angles. Yeah. Does that help? Mm -hmm. And then tangent, that's... Okay, yeah, so how does tangent work? Is it cosine over sine? It's sine over cosine. Sine over yeah, sine over cosine. Okay. So if we did something like, you know, what's tangent of, let's go with 3 pi over 4. So this is 3, pi over 4 is one of our common angles, so we're doing three of those, right? Mm -hmm. Here's pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, right? Which puts us right here, which is this point reflected over. Okay. So that means the x-coordinate is now negative, negative, and that's positive, right? Okay. So you do, so it's, uh, what was it? Is Sine it's over cosine. cosine. And since those are exactly the same numbers, just one of them is positive, the other one's negative, just negative one. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much, I mean, we could do all the other trig functions as well, you know, like if you did something like cotangent, oops, cotangent, it's just this one flipped over. So um, the only ones you have to be careful with are things like this. What's tangent of pi over 2, right? So pi over 2 is straight up. Mm -hmm. Tangent is the y divided by the x. So straight up, the y is 1, the bottom is 0, and that's undefined. Yeah. So tangent's not defined at pi over 2. So those are the only things you have to kind of be worried about. But sine and cosine, you should, it should be defined everywhere on the circle. Yeah. That help? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so now, you know, it's it just a matter of you, again, it's not really memorizing the 